off with Greg Schmidt, who will be talking to us about the Global Exploration Roadmap, the Science White Paper updates. And hopefully we'll get a uh, lot of good discussions about, uh, about the Science White Paper after this. Thanks very much, Brad. Um, so I, I think many of you are uh, already at least somewhat uh, familiar with the uh, Science White Paper. Um, we had one of the first discussions of this just a year ago um, at a uh, special session uh, immediately following our forum. And so what I want to do is kind of give you a little bit of a background uh, and, uh, oh, yes, thank you. A, a little bit of a, a background here um, and, and then discuss some specifics. And I'm just going to get to the punchline right now. We who are involved with this want you, the community, involved. And this is, you know, when I say you, I mean you in the United States and you in the rest of the uh, world. This, it's, this is a really, really important uh, document that's going to be uh, seen and read by uh, senior policymakers um, throughout all the uh, space agencies of the world. And it's an opportunity for us to make our science known and to communicate it in, in, uh, in simple, straightforward language that's going to be appealing to policymakers. And, uh, and we hope that that then will result in, uh, in missions um, that we all want to have happen. So let me start by uh, talking just a minute or so by, about ISEG, the International Space Exploration Coordination Group. Clive mentioned this a couple of days ago. Um, this is a, uh, a, um, a group comprised of 14 different space agencies, NASA included. You can see um, the rest um, around the uh, globe in the lower right there. And, uh, and so it actually represents many more than uh, 14 countries since, uh, since ESA um, and, and others are uh, comprised of uh, more than one country. So uh, it's, it is a non-binding forum. Uh, this is, it's a group that tries to work together to find commonalities. Um, the idea being um, that, uh, that when we work together on future exploration, human exploration, um, that we're going to achieve a whole heck of a lot more than if we uh, tried to each pursue some of these things separately. Um, one of the products of ISEG is the Global Exploration Roadmap. I suspect that uh, most of you, how many of you are familiar with the Global Exploration Roadmap? Okay, so that's, I'd, I'd say uh, that's probably half to, to uh, two-thirds of you. Um, I would encourage you to uh, find this um, on the web and take a look through it if you haven't yet uh, seen it. It, again, is a non-binding document, but uh, is, the intent is to, to find common goals and objectives to further human space exploration. Um, amongst these 14 space agencies within, uh, within ISEG. And so uh, there have been some activities recently. China has joined the dialogue. Um, I don't believe that they are yet an official member uh, of, uh, of ISEG, but I think things are um, trending towards, uh, towards that. Um, there's, uh, there's been a lot uh, better in understanding of the uh, design reference missions. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Um, that, uh, that form kind of the backbone of the, uh, of the GER. And, uh, and, um, and then where I'm really going with this is there's a lot of opportunities for uh, scientists such as yourselves. Um, there is a version of this that's being worked on right now and it's due for completion next year. So it's, it's on a uh, roughly uh, three-year center in terms of updates. This, this uh, version that you see here that was released in August 2013 was the uh, second Global Exploration Roadmap. There are uh, three different mission themes, um, particularly that are relevant to us, and I'm going to uh, be going into these in, in just a bit, um, but uh, exploration of a near-Earth asteroid, basically the, uh, the ARM option, extended duration, crew missions, um, non-landed crew missions, and then humans to the lunar surface. So uh, 
just a little bit more detail on these in, in terms of a cislunar deep space habitat, where what we're talking about here is a crew of four with, um, with initially with annual missions lasting on the order of a month, about 30 days, and, uh, and with an increased frequency and duration later on in, in, the, uh, in the decade, in the 2020s. Um, as far as the near Earth asteroid, what we're talking about is is the uh, is the option B of ARM, which was decided on recently, using solar electric propulsion based spacecraft, um, and then a crew of two visits the uh, asteroid boulder in a uh, distant retrograde orbit around the uh, moon. Um, in terms of lunar surface, we're talking about five 28 day, day missions with a crew of four, one mission per year. And, uh, and reuse a pressurized rover for, uh, for each mission. So now getting to the point of this, um, the science white paper is, is uh, again, I can't overemphasize the importance of this. The target audience is agency level policymakers. So we're talking um, people on the level of, of Charlie Bolden, Bill Gerstenmeier, et cetera, and their equivalents at, at other agencies but um, my very strong suspicion is this, go this is going to be used um, for uh, politicians, um, both in the United States and, uh, and elsewhere as well. Doing a good job selling our science, making it captivating, you know, putting, putting, putting the passion that we all feel towards this into this white paper is really, really important. And, and uh, I've been saying this at every talk that I've, that I've given on it. If we can if we can make those same policymakers catch that passion that we all feel, um, I, I think that only good things are going to result in, ter in terms of our uh, future missions. So, uh, so the idea is describing an international view of the science that could be enabled by, by missions in the, in the GER. And, and uh, the first bullet is, is really key here. This is why I'm giving the talk is engaging the scientific communities in identifying these opportunities. Um, and then fostering a deeper mutual understanding of the priorities, challenges, and opportunities for, for uh, both the scientific and exploration communities. This, again, is, is this conference, right? The intersection of, uh, of science and exploration, which is why um, Serbia is so involved in, uh, in this effort and then incorporating interdisciplinary scientific themes. Um, some of these go beyond the scope of, uh, of Serbi and, uh, and the scope of this uh, conference as well. So um, let's see. Unfortunately, a little check mark didn't, didn't get uh, on, on this somehow. But uh, this is kind of a, a scheme showing where we are right now um, and the plan for um, getting to the uh, um, to the science white paper. We've done a table of contents um, with, through a lot of negotiation, and, uh, and so there should be a check mark on that uh, far left box there. And we're in the process of drafting, um, of putting together the initial draft. I'll tell you how we're doing that in just a second. Um, then, uh, then once that's done, there's going to be a lot, lot of vetting with the communities. Um, at the bottom here, you see a representation of some of these uh, different groups that we're going to use to vet this. So uh, we're talking League and SBAG. Um, you, uh, for those of you uh, who were here late yesterday, you heard a, a town hall. I would expect to work with the chairs of each of these groups, as well as MEPAG, um, COSPAR, et cetera, LEWIG, um, all of the various groups, um, particularly the international ones that, uh, that represent the scientific uh, interests within this. And, uh, and so that vetting process is really key, as is getting people involved in the, uh, in the writing. Um, the middle box shows uh, editing for the target audience, and uh, this is going to be key as well. We want something that, uh, that top level people are going to be able to read and understand. So this is a really important, uh, um, really important part of it. And then a final review by uh, by stakeholder groups prior to um, approval by the respective agencies. Oh, there we go. So um, so there is a group that is guiding um, the development of uh, of this white paper. 
Um, ben Bussey, who I suspect all of you know well, um, and who really regrets, by the way, not being able to attend this, uh, this conference. Um, he had a, a, a commitment in Taiwan that he, uh, that he needed to uh, go to, but he sends his, his regards. It was him that was originally going to uh, be giving this paper. And, uh, and his co-chair for this is Jean-Claude Worms. Um, and uh, you can, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the list of uh, members of the SAG, but, uh, but you're familiar, I know, with, uh, with a number of them. I'm the executive secretary for this. And there's a, there's a group of uh, people as well um, from, from the um, science working group of ISAG that are helping to guide this. And uh, James, are you? Uh, in the audience right now, James Carpenter, maybe, maybe not. He is, he is here. James Carpenter from ESA, who's giving one of the closing talks um, today, has been one of the uh, people most responsible for uh, helping, helping guide this along the way. Um, we have here the, uh, um, how we have divided this up right now in terms of the, uh, the leads. I'm not going to go through all the, all the names, but this is divided up as I was talking about before with cis lunar deep space, with uh, NEA, and with uh, humans on the, uh, on the lunar surface. You, you uh, I'm sure, all recognize the names uh, here. Um, I want to emphasize that uh, we're still open in terms of contributors to this. Um, so uh, if you are interested in this, and I implore you to be interested in this, please contact me, or please contact uh, any of these um, people. And, uh, and we would love to have your help, both, um, both of course, in the drafting as well as the review. Um, we, uh, one of the things to emphasize here, too, is that we, um, this, is, this is the table of contents that I mentioned uh, earlier. What we're trying to do is, is, make, um, is make this document, um, like I say, to be able to hook the, uh, the um, the policymakers, the heads of agencies, et cetera. So, so we want to link the document to, to the uh, ex Global Exploration Roadmap very clearly, connecting it to the goals and objectives. Um, and then we want to have, um, have a broad swath, swath of science topics um, that are going to be compelling as well um, to talk about these at the, at the beginning, science topics that are going to be um, broad enough to, to encompass all of our uh, destinations here. Things like, uh, like astrobiology, uh, for instance. We, we then go into chapters um, on each of our uh, destinations, talking about, uh, about, about the science um, required for and enabled by each of these um, destination and destinations, and then a, a conclusion and reference. One of the things um, that we have been discussing internally is the idea of publishing this um, in a peer-reviewed peer journal um, ahead, of, uh, ahead of releasing it to the uh, agencies. We, we want this to be a very serious scientific document, and so this is something that we're, uh, we're considering doing. I welcome input uh, on that uh, idea. This would be once it's been vetted by the uh, community. Um, I'm not going to go into details on, on, this, um, on this slide other than to say um, we're looking at, uh, at dividing the science topics in this initial chapter that I just spoke of into, uh, into two um, basic areas, living and working in space, which, which we're kind of calling um, applied science and, uh, and our place in the universe, um, more of the fundamental science. I'm looking at Jack Burns here, and I imagine now he's smiling about that latter one. Um, so, uh, so what I'd like to do, I think I have just a handful of minutes for uh, for discussion. Still, two minutes. Okay. <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. Okay. We um, at Survey will have a website up very soon, um, within a month, uh, that is focused on this uh, GER science white paper. This this will serve the entire community. Um, just to emphasize the draft, draft, we're anticipating this being released to the community um, this, this fall. Different uh, chapters are in different stages um, right now. Um, my suspicion is that Humans on the Lunar Surface is going to be the first chapter released. 
Um, and then we plan to have um, future review sessions and, uh, and town halls um, to discuss this, akin to what we did last year, only with some meat to, to uh, look at. So, uh, so um, I'm talking with Clive about doing this at, uh, at the league annual meeting. Um, we have talked about the idea of doing this at AGU, LPSC, um, et cetera. We welcome your input. Uh, as to venues, um, conferences that might be appropriate. So with that, um, I'd like to conclude my slides and, and open it up for uh, what's an altogether too brief uh, discussion. Um, welcome your ideas. And again, I just implore you, please get involved with this. This is going to be very, very important when it's uh, released next year in terms of convincing those who have the purse strings to uh, release them to our community. Thank you. We have a few minutes for questions. David. Um, for those people who want to see the lunar series of missions in the GER, um, there is a card with them printed on the desk back there that you can pick up and take home. Thank you. Any more uh, thoughts or questions? Yeah, okay. Jack. Jack Burns, University of Colorado. Uh, Greg, just, just wanted to uh, reemphasize, I, I think this is a fantastic idea um, of these white papers uh, dedicated to science. Uh, that's a new aspect of the global exploration uh, roadmap, this version three that's being uh, put together. And when a number of us were at the uh, last workshop in Frascati a few months ago, it just became very clear the literal worldwide interest um, in this and getting engaged on the science aspect. Uh, and a real thirst we heard from the other space agencies for the US to lead um, in this effort, lead in defining the science, lead in defining exploration and infrastructure. And so it's, a, it's, it's an exciting opportunity uh, to indeed do that. Uh, and I like very much like your idea of um, putting this out uh, for publication as well in a peer-reviewed journal. So I uh, certainly strongly endorse that. Great, great. I appreciate the, uh, the feedback. Yeah, I understand. I unfortunately couldn't make it to the Frascati meeting, but I understand, understand there was quite a lively discussion. One of the things on our website, we are going to be publishing the results from that meeting and 